It has been over two weeks since the last time that we black bordered a map and that was on sunken columns. So today I'm very excited because we have a brand new map in the game, Sulphur Springs, and we're going to see how fast can we black border it. Now the reason I've waited so long is because this last update changed a big part of this series and that is the fact that Apocalypse now gives you money at the end of the round. Not only did we lose on Apocalypse because it was too hard sometimes, but you take such a long time to play it because you don't have any money, but that all changed. So that leads me to believe that we're going to fly through Apocalypse so much faster, drastically changing our times on all of these maps. Now I've only tested two game modes on this new map and that is just regular beginner so I could get to sandbox to test things and then I did play Apocalypse because I wanted to see how the new changes affected things. So I know nothing about this map in the hard modes. I don't know what we're going to do for half cash. I don't know what we're going to do for chimps or impoppable, but this map is actually really, really, really easy and something like an ultra juggernaut placed up here can pretty much destroy everything because it ricochets like crazy all across the front there going all the way to the bottom, making it an unbeatable cheap tower. So I think we'll be okay with most of these game modes. Now I'm just going to be using Benjamin in the beginning because I think having more money to buy things quicker will help. And then if we need to change, we can. But just for reference, I want to show us where we're at so far. Our fastest time is Cubism at 2 hours and 16 minutes, and this is an intermediate map. And our fastest intermediate map is Moon Landing at 2 hours and 26 minutes and 33 seconds, which I think we can beat, especially with Apocalypse essentially being cut in time, like by a lot. So the best thing we can do is just jump in and see what we can do here. So I'm going to actually hit FN9, get going on this, hit play, put our dart monkey down right here and just hope that he can kind of clean up. And then we've also been given another amazing tower in this latest update. And by that, I mean the third tier Glives Ricochet. It is now $510 on easy. I think it's like $600 on medium. And why is that so amazing? Well, it used to be like $1,100 or $1,200. It used to be like double the cost almost. And this tower is up there with the Druid as far as effective in the early game. Now it's not going to be as awesome as the Druid keeping it all at the front of the track making balloons non-existently seen, but for $600 we already have a tower that can carry us to well past round 28. It can even pop the leads if you use the bottom path and as you can see it's not like we're wasting any time seeing the very bottom of these balloons so it's really 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 good and then i'm thinking we're going to use benjamin because he'll make round 40 super super simple because all we have to do is pop it open and then it instantly ends because of his trojan plus we get the extra money to help us build up more defenses earlier on meaning we don't really even have to farm on beginner mode because we never really do farm on beginner but the more money that you have the more you can spend on you know, quicker defenses is my idea on it. But what I'm super, super curious to see is that if we even beat our fastest time on cubism just because of Apocalypse. Now, Apocalypse is just slow. You're sitting there and you're waiting to pop things. You let a lot of them escape through the end of the track just because you don't have enough money to buy anything. And that's all changing, which is just purely insanity. This is a perfect map for subs, by the way. And it just, it makes sense. They created the sub paragon and they made a map that's like perfect for it because it just sits here with all of his little sub buddies. And you can also throw an alchemist all around the edges to give them just super buffs if you wanted to. So it's a really, really cool map for that case. But I think like how balanced is an intermediate map? I think this one's also one of those like, you know, giveaway intermediate maps to where it's actually like super, super, super easy. And I think the only reason it's considered intermediate is because of the placements. Like you can only fit, I think three, maybe I think you can fit three if you place these just perfectly. If not, you only get two. And to get something like a village up on your dart monkey over here, you have to put one here, get it to a bottom path. So it has that super range on the village and then put another village next to it to get even more range. And then you can get this tiny corner tower to have the faster jungle drums. I'll show you a little bit later. It's just kind of silly what you got to do for it but now just like that we have everything covered we have lead covered we have camo covered camo with him and nothing's gonna really be seen which is awesome and if we want to take it even faster we learned on sunken columns that just going with like the bottom path middle path sniper monkey is unbeatable straight up unbeatable because he keeps everything at the front of the screen and you never see it throw in something like a druid and it's even crazier but if you noticed we're already on round 28 i don't even have a druid yet that's how good this new boomerang monkey is i can't believe it how much it's changed just from one update and it wasn't even like a huge update but just the fact that we have that earlier start like think of apocalypse already it would have been amazing just to have that top path dart monkey because you don't make any money but now you're going to have it even cheaper on plus you make money oh my gosh but that's what i was going to on until i went on a tangent is the apocalypse should be like 10 million times easier because you would just let all the balloons sneak out 
and it wouldn't really slow you down because the rounds don't stop. So it's not like you're waiting for a balloon to leave before the next round starts slowing down your time. But what would happen is you just wouldn't be able to pop things and you'd get to the end and you get overwhelmed. So we'd have to like restart the round or whatnot or hit the home screen and then come back. But now you have so much money. It's literally just easy mode, never ending easy mode, pretty much. Some people are equating it to like alternate balloon rounds on medium, but like it's even like alternate balloon rounds is hard. This is the easiest thing I've ever seen. And a lot of people were complaining that Apopolis was too hard and it's random. You get random seeds every time and it just makes it too difficult and I understand that but now it's just kind of like brokenly easy so I just don't get what the point of it is now like what purpose is it serving just because it's endless rounds it's just kind of weird they should kind of pair apocalypse up with medium mode or reverse mode since they're on medium anyway do reverse and apocalypse together so it like comes out backwards and a bunch of different balloons that'll really throw people off <laughs> but it won't be hard enough to like lose to but here's our first one already done because now if it does turn around 40, we can use his ability to give them strongerness too. And then it's, oh, I did it too early, but it still worked out. The timing was fine. Oh, but it is the collection of it. So we're most like, oh, what are we on? Okay, just intermediate one time. We got to remember that stuff so we don't slow down on just menuing there. That's such a big downfall when it comes to speed runs, I feel like. It's just menuing and being able to pause and doing all that kind of stuff. But again, this is going to be our start for this because you throw down your free dart monkey and then you get your glive ricochet and it just goes around going crazy. And after a few rounds, you have it. Now we could probably even just make it to Benjamin with what we have here because the dart monkey and the boomerang are good towers. But why? When you can just do this and now you're set until, like I said, round 28 if you get the red hot rings. But I did take like a over two week hiatus because of the update and I saw that the apocalypse was changing so I didn't want to make a new how fast can you black border just to have it kind of nerfed back when I used to make strategies that was a huge thing for me I'd work on a strategy work on a strategy and there was a few times I had to completely scrap a video for instance I remember I worked really hard on this infernal chimps run one time and then as soon as I had this perfect strategy that night the update came out ruined the entire thing and I had to just scrap a whole video that I spent hours on and so I didn't want to do that with the how fast can you black border because with this apocalypse change I really need to see how it works so I just kind of took a little bit off of there and I was doing a lot of videos on the update testing out the new boat because the new top path boat is amazing we're going to be using that today if you haven't been utilizing that tower use it in your runs because it's like way too good for how cheap it is like literally just getting a boomerang a sada and a top path boat and then maybe something for some camo other than Sada, you are golden till way late in the game, way late in the game, depending on the map. But I'm kind of hoping too that the apocalypse change doesn't affect that much. I think it would be really awesome if it just kind of stayed where it was at, because then if it's such a drastic change that we have the new top time on intermediate map to boot based on what we already have already with our times, I'm gonna be kind of disappointed because that means the other 27 or so runs that we did, uh, I'm gonna feel like I need to go back and redo them all because we have such a drastic change in the game. And they also made a huge change to chimps mode as well, but that luckily doesn't affect what we're doing here. You can retry the last round on chimps, which is amazing for us who like to just play chimps mode because it's such, such a devastating blow when you're trying to just get to the end of it and then you lose on 98. So to retry the last round is awesome, but unfortunately you can't get a black border that way. And since we're doing how fast can you black border, we'd have to restart it anyways, which does us absolutely no good. It's just cool to have for in general gameplay. But before we dive too deep into this, hit that like button if you like what you're watching so far. Subscribe if you're new and catch up on the previous How Fast Can You Blackboard episodes. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description below, but there's not really much else to do here. We don't have any global towers, so I'd have to get rid of something. Uh, do we honestly need anything else though? Like these two can handle all of it. I think maybe the camo could get us a little bad, but can we put, oh, we can put one here, huh? Okay, that's actually not bad. Put another crossbow right there. Okay, now we're completely golden. I wonder if he could fit like another one here. Not really, but I wonder if this one could reach, probably. It'll reach enough to where if it gets to this point, he can attack too. So you got a really good grip on some things here. It just, I'm trying to think about chimps and impossible because like I said, I have not even I'm not even tested. I haven't even looked at it. I figured this is such an easy map. I could completely be getting a big head and we could just lose the whole thing based on that. But I'm going in with like zero doubts that we can destroy this thing. So I'm trying to decide like what two towers do I want to place here on chimps. A juggernaut would be amazing, but you'd have to go with the bottom path to give it camo unless we did that whole thing with the discount village. And that's just a waste of 10 grand because you don't need a monkeyopolis fourth path thingy. Oh, I need to just keep moving here. I'm like talking my head off, but you don't need all that stuff. Oh my gosh, I can't do I can't do both at the same time, guys. I gotta just do one or the other. <laughs> we'll just keep that guy there and we'll be okay for deflation for now. But I'd be kind of nervous placing a top path ultra juggernaut with the bottom path camo because you would need the fourth path bottom village, which is $10,000 to get that extra range on it. 
so you could actually place your Ultra Juggernaut here to get camo on it. And that just seems a little redonkulous, but it would be so good. And it's already a cheap tower. I might consider something like that, but honestly, I think it would also be really cool to have a sub here with a bunch of other subs and then like an entire pool. It'll be like an alchemist seance circle and they'll all just be throwing their potions in the pool, making everybody super strong, It'll be like a ritual of some sorts. But then again, they won't have the ability to pop lead except for the alchemist, which we all know is kind of garbage. I don't know. We'll think about that when it comes, but honestly, I think a sub on chimps would be actually kind of fun. Yeah, it'll, it'll work. It'll work. I have an idea. I have an idea. If we have enough alchemists going around the pool with an assistant, initiative i don't see why it wouldn't be awesome plus useful but that's a huge risk to take to get all the way to chimps mode on like the 90s just to lose through ddt but we'll see and there's deflation at 15 minutes is that good i think we're actually making some really good time here i just hope we don't get that collection event at all and we already got the poopy brown border we're on medium standard mode and i think same start applies just put this one here i don't know what we're going to do about military to be honest but i don't think it matters and then but i was thinking about chimps mode and i'm thinking we start off with the dart monkey here and a sniper and then we get an ice monkey here later on and that will have embrittlement which will solve our problem not being able to pop the ddts yeah you like that i like that idea i think it's gonna work a lot i don't see why this won't be our fastest time yet and not only just because everything's staying at the front of the screen but let's say worst case scenario it doesn't stay at the front of the screen it passes by to right here to where every tower is still in the same position it's not like for instance sunken columns we went really fast considering there's an advanced map but once it got out of here it went down this way and then you had to chase it this one literally stays in the same position so your towers up front that are dominating can still dominate and the ones that are back here globally shooting aren't gonna have to chase it around a map missing it's still in the same spot even more at a better angle because it's closer to them it's just kind of crazy how easy this map is we might have a top tier time remember going into hard mode we're usually around like 48 minutes so if we're faster than that we're already on a really really good time plus oh no i think next is apocalypse no no no. next is military then apocalypse and i'm really really excited to see apocalypse i think we're just gonna zoom through it so fast part of me is thinking to switch to sada so we can start off with her but i don't think we need to like going with a top path boomer is just as good if not better than sada yes she has an ability for cleanup but do we care so i'm gonna test this right now and switch this one to here so i'm gonna sell this dart monkey and then buy this one here if i can in time and then we're gonna buy the ultra juggernaut with the camo and see if it's any faster what i'm hoping is that it bounces off which led me to something cool in my head just this very moment what if we had something that we could put up blockades for towers like let's say the sniper for instance you really wanted him to see down this line but you didn't want him chasing over here I don't know why, but you could put up a blockade tower. Or for instance, imagine if we could block this little lava here. All of the juggernauts would just spin in circles around here and it would be a death onslaught. I know I'm asking for like the whole cake and to eat it too because we already have this amazing map which bounces everywhere, <laughs> but still it'd be really cool. Oh my gosh, it's already medium and I love this stuff. All right, so now we're on to the next one, which is military only. We do not have the cool setup that we had, but we can still do it with a sub. Yeah, 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 we'll do it with the sub here and then we'll snipe. We should have gone with a boat, huh? The reason I said it is because you get half off or a third off of your first military. So why wouldn't you get a good military? And why wouldn't I put the stupid sniper up top? I'll have to put another one here and then go like this. There we go. I'm actually going to sell this one. That's just a dumb idea. I should have got advanced intel. So now we can bounce off of this guy. I've never had to use snipers as my global range here for the sub but i guess it works we'll make this one camo and maybe another camo in here so then i'll have full range of this little circle <laughs> and i figured this would help out a lot too but we're not gonna need oh no we do need camo pretty early on so i'll put it right here to start and then just get that one and now we have a camo seeing tower in that one little tiny circle and then we're gonna have to make this one some kind of lead popper so it can actually hit the camo lead on 59 because that's always a detrimental loss there is when you you think you're doing good and then those big rush of camo leads come out you're like oh my gosh i didn't even think about that oh we have a benjamin <laughs> dude what an idiot i totally should have got that earlier but oh well he might still be a trojan by 40 if not we're gonna have this guy up to like triple guns and the other one so we should be fine so it turns out just anything sub and sniper related is just a destroyer of worlds i don't even see anything besides like the moab class but even then it's not that big of a deal i don't want to get main moab because we've been there done that it's just kind of not the best situation because you end up with it's slowing it down and the sub doesn't get the attacks. I've noticed that with the Spectre too, you'll watch the Spectre's pops just stay put while the snipers do all the work or like the Spirit of the Forest. So I think this is our best route, but it's so funny using them as our global range for the sub. I've never done it. It feels weird, but I guess if you have enough of them, it's pretty good. And we're kind of going for the uh, axis of havoc. If we had another 40 rounds, we could totally make it. But while we're waiting for this thing to get through, I have a totally random question for you guys that I've been meaning to ask. 
What is the earliest childhood show you remember watching? As you guys know, I have a newborn daughter. She's about two months old now. We're thinking like, what shows are we gonna have her watch? Are we gonna have her watch the shows that we knew as kids? Is she gonna just be watching Barney and Avatar Last Airbender? Or do we watch what's new on TV? Like, does she watch Bluey or will Bluey be too old? There'll be a new one out. What do you guys remember as your earliest, earliest shows? I remember mine were Barney, Rugrats, I think like, hey Arnold, but then again, that was probably even older. I, I'm trying to think of like way back, way back. And I remember it was Barney because I remember those songs like engraved in my head forever. Now when I questioned myself was, did it teach me good things? Like, do I remember being a better friend or sharing is caring or happy family stuff because I watched Barney or does that stuff just kind of go over your head? Or do you guys remember specific things you learned from a show? Like we were, we were running through a Disney Plus there and I saw Gola Gola Island. Oh my gosh, that show is so old. I remember that show. I remember like the happy family dancing around all the time. And I'm like, my family doesn't dance around, isn't happy like that all the time. Okay, okay, boomerang here, boomerang here. Okay, we got this, we got this. Remember, this is Apocalypse now. This is the new one that we were talking about. And so things are going to get a little weird here because we might lose a couple, but we can actually put this guy here too to get some more pops. So if we don't lose any lives on Apocalypse, that means it's a little too easy, right? Because look at now we're not going to lose anything. This Glive Ricochet is going to take down everything and we are safe to get our Benjamin as our next tower. That is super, super weird. And that's where this has already gone awry because I think we would at least have to wait till around 10 or 11 to get this guy to $600 in the old one. So it's technically this should go faster, but I'm curious. Do the rounds go faster in Apocalypse if you make them go faster? Or is it just like a regular round where they stall out? You guys gotta let me know these things. So we turned it on for a little bit like, I wonder if this would be a good show for her. And it's so funny and it's such, it's, they teach good things back then. And I don't know if new shows are like that or if new shows are just all about like that quick attention, you know? Like I've heard Coco Melon is just like straight up like endorphins for your baby. And you just sit there and you're just like, rrr, rrr, and you can't really focus. And it's just fast movements like watching a Mr. Beast video and it's all over the place. And so I'm just super curious because does TV have a huge hold on you? And do you remember things from it specifically? Just random things that pop up in my head after being a dad. You're like, hmm, I, I understand what my parents went through now. <laughs> I get the stress of it. You want everything to be perfect. So let me know the earliest show you remember watching, the earliest one. And if you remember lasting effects from it, because I think that's pretty cool. One thing I do remember from Barney actually is uh, Clean Up. There's a song called Clean Up, Clean Up, Everybody Everywhere, Clean Up, Everybody Do Your Share. And like, I remember like I used to clean up my toys. Like I, we were not messy kids. Did, was it because of Barney? Because my, my mom would like threaten me with the... Uh, the wrath of God if I didn't clean up. You, you never know <laughs> which one was it. But so far this is good. I have a lot of money. I don't know why I'm sitting here thinking on it. I'm just like in nostalgia mode thinking about all these old terrible television shows I used to watch. Like I remember learning the draw from this one called Pappy Land. It was this old man in his weird clothes, like mining clothes from the like the 49er days when they were pining for gold and he would teach you how to draw. And I would just draw so much stuff. It was so much fun. But anyways, so far, so good. Uh, we missed our first camo because I wasn't paying attention to that. We're good now. So we have a camo popper. We have a lead popper. We have our money maker. Oh, but this is a pop and I usually do get money because if not, you get overwhelmed way too quick. Okay, we got to remember what we do here. I'm just, I like the not farming thing. It's such a nice relief to not have to worry about money for once. That's the thing I like to remember too. There was a time that I didn't have to worry about money. It was when I was a baby, I guess, because... As soon as you get old enough to get a job, all you want to do is get a job when you're younger. And then as soon as you get one, you're like, oh, wow, I, I screwed up. I should have just stayed a kid because jobs are stressful. And then you just always worry about money. Either you don't have enough or you have to worry about how to spend it right to make sure you can keep enough. There's all these things go to it. But regardless, it's this is balloons, so this isn't life. But it is life, though. But it is. But it isn't. <laughs> But we're doing really good here. I think if we get this one to armor piercing darts, I have proved before that the sub can handle just as good as like a druid. But I always go with druid in these things because you get that really, really, really awesome uh, regrow cleanup. Because the regrows are what can get you like completely offset here. But with this guy being able to hit everything, I don't see why it would be a problem. I kind of want to get this guy to more glaives, but then he can't see camo. What do we actually, actually no, we can just do this and it'll take down everything. Yeah, we're good. All I have to do is get to Ultra Juggernaut and then sell this for that. And so we might be able to stay like this forever. But I might as well make it a little easier for us because we're not even seeing balloons. So this is a good, 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 good setup. I honestly think we're going for a top time here. Unless I make a mistake, I don't see how it wouldn't be. I say that every time. And I'm like, the weirdest maps are what ends up being the fastest ones. Like, I did not think Cubism would be our fastest time because the straight line is such a straight long line that you're not going to get as much attacks as you would on something like this, but somehow I was able to play so many up front and not lose enough balloons 
So I'm just curious at what's the biggest time waste because we still haven't figured that out, I don't think. But there we go. Now we got the Ultra Juggernaut. I don't think anything's gonna be a problem. We'll have more glaives for that. Obviously, we don't have to worry about camo lip. We actually don't have to worry about anything. And we have still a ton of money. We're already on round 60. Oh my goodness. Can I just sell these and get that one up to there? I can, huh? Oh my good. Oh, it's already done. That was, dude, that, oh my God, that saved us so much time. That saved us so much time. Because look it, we're at 36. Okay. We remember 48 gets us the hard mode. We are actually, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It could just be the map, but I think that just saved us like 18 minutes. That was way too crazy. Oh, now I shouldn't have done this map as the first one with the apocalypse mode. I should have done a harder map. Something that has like not of craziest spins, but I wasn't sure how crazy easy this one was. Let's move them to a left hand. That'd be a little bit better, right? Because, oh man, that's so, that was so fast. And I didn't even stress. There was no panics. There was no accidentally like needing to hit home or even thoughts of that. It just ended abruptly quickly and you could easily, okay, okay, okay. They should make it to make up for giving you end around cash. They should make it go to round 80, just saying. And it wouldn't be that weird if you think about it because you're like, well, medium goes to round 60. But if you think about deflation, deflation goes to round 60, given it starts at 30, but it's, it goes around 60 in beginner. So there's no reason that Apocalypse shouldn't go to 80 in medium mode, maybe starting it at around 25 or 30. Cause that, that would make sense. Cause that was just, that was un uneventful. It was unnecessary. It's like, it's like reverse is unnecessary. I say that every single time, but you don't need reverse or Apocalypse now. They're both just useless game modes. So they should be merged together and go to around 80 call today. But how do you guys feel about the new sub Paragon? I, I hate to talk bad. So I'm not gonna talk bad. I'm just gonna talk what I'm feeling. I'm I'm kind of underwhelmed. I was just thinking it would be a lot more because the sub is such a versatile and amazing tower. I thought the sub would be a lot better. And I get it that not every tower that comes out can be the next strongest tower that would just kind of get ridiculous after a while. But I just thought that like more of it and I, I still don't get it. I don't get why you would ever submerge it. Like it does build your your Paragon's abilities faster, it regenerates them quicker. So I did use that a lot going late game, but it's not enough that it's like game breaking. It's not like half the time. It's just, it didn't make any sense why you would ever submerge because why do you care if like 10 armor piercing darts are buffed when you have a sub Paragon that can do like 45 million times damage that 10 of those could do anyway. So it just it literally made no sense to me. But it's main attack is really good. Like it's just main shooting attack like this is good. But I think it's so weird that a Paragon that you spent half a million dollars on has to have like a dart monkey here to see its range. That is so weird to me. <laughs> and then on top of that, the nuke. I honestly just don't really have much good to say about it because I just don't get it. I And I'm not saying it out of just meanness or wrongness. I just, I just don't get it. I hope that someone explains it to me or that it gets a rework because it just seems like a goofy tower to be honest. And then that nuke ability is just so underwhelming too. Like it takes an entire eternity. I can literally hit the button and go to the bathroom and come back and it's still counting down. Meanwhile, you're not attacking. And then when it does, it does good damage. Like it did, it was the reason I was able to eke out, you know, a new round each time once you get to like the 260s and stuff, but it just wasn't, I thought it was gonna be like a bomb blitz attack. Like it literally just blows up the entire screen and you're done but it wasn't, it was like a on the ground damage over time explosion thingy. And I was just, what, what is going on here? So far, it looks like a new strategy has emerged. Free dart monkey into top path boomer, and then you can pretty much set up whatever defense you wanna set up. And this is super goofy. I just thought it'd be fun to have like three generations of alchemists here. Plus I wanna actually keep the acidic mixture dip on him 99% of the time because 59 always destroys me like I was talking about. And so I thought this would just be a good way to counteract that. I haven't even really been using a druid. Did I even use one at all? I don't even remember. Like that is so cool. Now it could just be map dependent because like I said, this is a really, really simple map. So let's say that our first point of contact was back here. Cause a lot of maps are kind of like that, right? If you want to set up a good base, like cubism, for instance, you want to have your defense a little farther back. So it has more time to hit the boomerang will be good, but it has to wait till it's in contact to actually hit it all the way at the front. Meanwhile, the Druid can attack from anywhere on the screen and keep them all at the front. So the Druid is still obviously a superior tower, but for $600 cheaper, you can get a top path third tier boomerang that can also pop leads. And if you want to go with the middle path, you can just pop a ton of balloons really quickly. So I think it's really good. Like, especially for, think about half cash. Half cash is going to be ridiculously easier just because of this tower, because now we don't have to completely stress and save up all that money. And then the middle path of the Druid too, that heart of Oak is just a useless upgrade. It's completely useless because you're going for the Druid in the beginning 
So why do you need to upgrade to something that helps you later on in the game? It's just such a goofy upgrade and it needs to be reworked too. I'm just hating today, but I just don't, I don't get it now. I never did get it that you had to go there to get to the middle one. But Judah the Jungle is so amazing. Should I buy something else here? Probably buy a Crossbow Master. I'm just sitting here with no, not paying attention here, but we made 10,000 with Sushi Bin. That's pretty good. So we don't even need to farm. I wonder if we even need to farm on hard mode because we have such a crazy thing up here. We can just use the dart monkey and switch him to the ultra juggernaut and we'll be golden all the way to 80. But I do need to take a couple deep breaths and just breathe this one out because I am getting too crazy. I'm getting too big headed and this is when I make the dumbest mistakes is I'll forget something stupid like on alternate balloon rounds I'll forget the camo lit on 24 and just lose the game and lose the speed. But right now we are on a, a speedy mission. The only thing that will hold us back is the collecting those insta monkey events but I'll click through it as fast as I possibly can. But I do need to breathe it through and think about it because every time I get a big head is when I make stupid mistakes. But there's round 60. We are done. And I think we're going to have to collect. I feel like it's been long enough. Yep. You can just feel it. You can feel it in your bones that the game's going to just stomp on your parade, which is why I knew it. And I said I need to take a breath before it. What are we doing here? What are we doing? What are we? What the heck are we doing? Oh, my goodness. That new thing, isn't it? That was super stressful. We're on hard mode. That was super, super stressful, but we'll we'll get through it. So I'm gonna put this guy here and I'll show you why. And then we're gonna start with this one right here and that's good to go. So normally I would go for Ben as quick as I could or go for a sub just to hang on. And we could hang on with just this and get to Ben, but I do think I am gonna sacrifice things even on Impoppable, just because this is a guarantee speed up. And I think it's speeding us up by like 55% or something, just because he's gonna keep everything at bay. Like I said, we can, we can defeat all this stuff. Like we're never gonna have one get through, I don't think, going to Benjamin. But why not speed it up even quicker? Like right now, we'll be done with this round onto the next one. Yeah, see, now we're not going to let anything get past us. That has to be faster, right? It has to be faster keeping everything here and then getting money than to get money and then to keep everything there. I know it's only we're talking fractions of a second, but I just wasted a couple fractions of a second screwing around with the collection event. And that new collection thing that when you actually hit the collections, you get to go straight to the four maps that are there is super, super amazing. Don't get me wrong. Like when I play collection events, it's so awesome just to look at what I have to choose from rather than to like randomly sift through them all and, and then skip over it. But in this case, it just held me up and I don't like it. Now, the reason I placed the dart monkey here is because I am going to test out my, oh no, 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 no. Oh my goodness. This is what I'm talking about. If you miss one on this map, you're just, you're a loser. You're a loser. But I did put the Dart Monkey here because I do want to test my theory to see if it'll be good on Impoppable. I was using it for the race event on this map, but that was a little obviously different because it's weird how you set up race events. But I'm thinking about putting a village here, getting this guy to be buffed up. And then I don't know if I should go camo or go with the jungle drums. Is it better to see camo on this guy because then you'll have the faster upgrade or would you just do jungle? Just, I'm not making any sense what I'm saying, but you'll get there. But see, like right now, I'm so focused on getting this farm up that we're circling around and we're probably going to lose a couple here. But if I just bought the sub, we wouldn't be losing any at all because now we'd have that one and we'd keep them all at bay. Twin guns, airburst darts. Yeah, dude, this is way better. This is way better because now nothing will even get past anything. I should have just done that, but I was so focused on farming. I still don't know everything. We're like 20 something maps in and I believe there's like 70. So we still have a long ways to learn and best ways to be efficient. But I'm also super, super hard on myself too. Are any of you guys like that as well? Like I'll just take the smallest things and be like, no, I could have done better. Which is like, it's just saves you like a fraction of a second. Who cares? It's just better practice for the future, I guess. But like I take a uh, piano classes as an adult because I was like always wanted to do it as a kid, just never did. And then in my teen years and my like early 20s, I really want to do it, but it just costs too much money. But now I'm, I'm an adult, I'm established. I'm like, I'm going to do some piano. So I do it like once a week on Wednesdays. I have this piano teacher I go see, teaches me stuff. And I'm like super hard on myself. Like I'm an adult learning something new, but I'm still like super crazy. And I'm like, no, I could do better. I could do this. I could do that. And she's like, dude, just chill. Like you're getting there. You'll get there. Just don't worry about it. I'm like, no, I could have played that better. It needs to be perfect. And that's how I feel about this. It's like every step is a new note to learn. And I want to hit it the right way at the right time. And then so it's like, should I buy the farm first? Should I buy the bin first? Should I buy the tower first? You just never know. But so far, I mean, we are flying. We started it like two minutes faster than we normally do. But I do think a lot of that is the map. But I also do think a lot of that, a lot of that is Apocalypse. So that makes me want to go play a beginner map now to see if we can beat Cubism. Because I don't know if this will be our top time, right? Like it is an intermediate map. There has to be some reason to make it intermediate. There's no way it could be the fastest time. But we might as well get this going now. This is what I was talking about. So getting a double discount's fine. 
Oh, duh, we have to do it that way because we need the more range. I totally forgot you can't go camo on it. Let's see if we can make it. So I'm gonna need to buy this one here, double discount this so I can get this one to $8,900. And now we have Monkey Town, which does raise the range, but not good enough. And then we have Monkey City and it's still not, oh, it is in range. Okay, so if you put it on the very, very tip corner, you're good. And then you don't have to get bigger radius jungle drums. You could get him to see camo, which would be amazing. Oh, that's actually really cool. But I've already gone with the enhanced eyesight one. No, 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 no. This, this is a better plan. And I need, I really need to just stop messing around here. We really do. Like I'm so, I'm so focused on trying to figure this out. So we're going to go this one and see camo. There we go. No, no, no. We're not seeing camo. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? We need this one. Oh, I'm so lost in my head right now. We just need this one all the way up here to this one. And this one, we don't want to see camo. What am I doing? What a dummy. I want this one like this with this one to make him faster. And then this one is going to be an ice guy right here. Now everybody sees camo. Can he be in range too? No way, that's awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna go like this and now everybody gets extra money. This guy's super strong. And now that should make up everything that I just messed up. We have a super fast one. Obviously we can't go to primary training, but I don't think we need it because this, we have this guy to make him stronger. We have this guy speeding him up. And I'm thinking this will be good for round 90 and plus, right? Because now everything should just be destroyed and then we could get something like a sniper here because we're discounted. Plus we get the extra money from it. I, I like this idea. Oh my goodness. This is going to be ridiculous on impoppable. Because look at this. We can just buy this and just cycle it all the way up. And now we have this. <laughs> we're on regular hard mode, by the way. So if I added a fourth farm and bought my stuff sooner and didn't screw around with the monkeyopolis because I wasn't sure which one to go for and stuff earlier on, we're going to have this guy on impoppable by like round 75 and then this is game right here. And we can even go with the, the stronger degree 26 one. That is just purely insanity. And look at this goal here. This is a broken tower. I think degree one ISAB was making it run to like the 200s plus just because of how crazy broken it is. The fact that it can spin around the, the beginning like this. this is so crazy. This is nuts. We are gonna have first place time. Oh my gosh. And the time to beat is two hours and 16 minutes with the next one being between two hours and 21 and two hours and 30 seems to be like a big grip of all of the different runs. But if we can beat 216, which I don't see why we couldn't, this is so easy. And a lot of it's to do with that boomerang, I swear to you. Here, check it out, hurry up. Get out, in this. it's like you didn't even see it or something. That was weird. All right, next one up, we're going for it. Now, it, I don't even remember what it is though. Magic monkeys only with a Benjamin, that might be kind of stupid, but I don't care. We'll just start with this one here, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Go faster, okay, there we go. So he doesn't like the spin, the spinning part of it. It's not good for him, but I don't care. I think we have to just go for the Druid right away and sacrifice a little bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I don't think he's, oh, his range isn't good enough. I'm wondering if hard thorns will make a difference. That's two rounds now that I had to just sacrifice. If this should stop him, no, he's still messing up. I need the more range to be honest. So I think what I'll have to do is just buy like a ninja right now too, because this is just too much. How about just another, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninja will be good. And then with 735, I can sell this guy and buy the Druid and then we'll be okay. So that's actually not the worst thing to have to be able to do here. And we can sell, sell, buy. There we go. Game over. Whew. That was actually a lot more than it needed to be. I probably could have done it sooner if I would have went with the Ninja first, got it up to Seeking Shurikens, then bought the Druid, all that kind of stuff. But round 13 is not that terrible. And now we are completely safe until round 24. I don't have to buy anything and I can buy my Benjamin. And I don't know if we ever go with Benjamin on Magic Monkeys only. We always go for somebody else. But Benjamin is one of my favorite heroes. Between him and Sada, it's really hard to tell which one to go for. But on this map, since it's such an easy map to start, I really don't see why Sada would be a better choice. Because we are going to make like 10 grand with this guy by what, like round 60 or so, which is not bad. So I think what I'm going to do here is actually kind of fun. I'm going to try to place him as far off as I can to the left. We're going to sacrifice that first camo because I need to get this done. And then we're going to go this one. Oh, that's where I didn't want it to be. And the reason why is because when the purple start flying out, I don't want them to be hit by the fire until the very last second. But I guess it doesn't matter because now he can hit them too. So this is a really good team up here. And then I can just go straight for the jungle's bounty. We obviously don't have a way to pop the Moab, but I don't want to have to worry about that yet. Let's let future Joel worry about that. But if I would have placed this starting over, I would have put the wizard here all the way to the left because if the fire is here, the camo will never, the purple will never stop its firepower. And then we'd hit it first with the druid and then it would clean up here and we'd have like this perfect technique going. 
Oh, but it seems to be working anyway. It's not hitting it in that side. Oh, it's actually in the perfect, perfect spot. It literally can't hit the ones coming into the screen. That is so good. That's exactly what I wanted. And it's at the worst or the last spot possible to hit. That's genius. All right, now we got jungle's bounty. We can start making money. Actually though, I'm gonna try something a little different because we do have to pop the Moab. So I'm gonna put this guy here and then put these there. And then now it should never go into there. It should always just stay. Oh, that's perfect actually. And then we'll put it actually a little bit up here. Oh, that's so good. That should take down any Moabs like without a problem at all. And then we're free to just keep farming with this guy by getting 320 per round, whoop de doo But eventually we'll get Spirit of the Forest and make this super easy. Because then all of his main little brambles will be right here in the circle. So anything that comes around will just instantly get destroyed in this center spot and never even make it past the first circle. That's really good. But now I always wonder about this one and I think we should just do it just because. Just start using rubber to gold and just put it on last. I'm not sure if he's going to get any pops, but I think if he does, it'll help out a little bit, right? So, I mean, that doesn't hurt. And then we could also sell it, and I'm hoping it at least makes its sell price back by that time. So we just need $33,000. That's a lot of money to think about. But there are just some maps that are so broken for certain towers, like this one, for instance. The whole thing with this guy is that he has to pop them inside of his little range to get the graves up, but everything's in his range right here. So there's never going to stop. He's always going to have a full graveyard. So he's going to have these continuously popping out. Doesn't care if they're Moabs, BFBs, he'll just shred through them. And then this guy will clean up anything underneath. That is insanely fast. And there we go. We already have spirit. I'm going to get him his heart of thunder too, because why not? And then I was thinking about going for the Prince of Darkness, but that's another tower that's not the like best for Moabs. So I was thinking is if I can place this guy here, maybe here won't be too bad either if I go with like the top one in the middle path. I just want to do some more damage here. I think even a wizard right there would be good for now, huh? Yeah, if we go with like the middle path one like that, oh, that's really cool. Because now he has more range since I went with the camo one, so he can help destroy the stuff. We'll get this one up to this one. This is so fast, you have no idea. I'm going to call it. This is a top time. This is around 75. We normally have like a influx of BFBs and it's slow and we're barely even seeing anything. If you use your ability rights and everything, yeah, where'd 76 go? <laughs> because I ability at the right time or wrong time made it disappear. And then with these two having like unlimited range to the top of the screen and this one destroying and this clearing out everything in the game plus getting us $26,000 in its lifetime. This is ridiculous. I mean, we overuse Spirit of the Forest, but he'd also be great for chimps on this map, but I don't think we're gonna need it. I think a substrat would just be like pretty awesome and then maybe a spirit at the end to clean it up. No, 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 we're gonna do Juggernaut into subs and that should clear the whole game. I am worried about the DDTs, I always am, but maybe we can get like a preemptive strike. I, and you know, probably what I'm thinking should be our most biggest concern is half cash coming in here, but I don't think so with that boomerang. We might just be set up for like perfection but then what do we, what else do we use? Uh, juggernaut, duh. duh. Duh, 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 We always have problems, but if we get the Juggernaut, we'll have zero problems. That is so awesome. And can I time the round 80 ZOMG? Let's try it, let's try it. Oh, we did it, we did it. It was just a BFB. That was so fast. You can't beat that. That was the fastest time I've ever seen in my life. All right, so back to intermediate. We're on to double HP Moabs, which as you know, is pretty much a wash. It's just like hard mode, but with an extra bomb in the beginning. So we're going to do this one and we're going to go, oh, I don't actually know what's, what would be the best. The, the, dude, the boomerang, duh. What are you thinking? Do the same thing you did before. Why change it up? Why fix what ain't broken, right? So I think we're going to do exactly what we did before, but round 40 will be a little different. So you can actually add another dart monkey on here. So you can fit three. And then I did because I didn't want to have to sell that one later because it's only worth $0. So I'm going to sell this one and make a couple bucks off of it. We'll use it for camo for now. So that is a change up I am making. So I think I should actually call it quits right now and start saving up for that bomb because as you know, like the bomb is the whole important part of this and what makes double HP different is that first round 40 Moab. Other than that, it's exactly the same. But this time I realized that I placed all my farms down there before and I'm like, why do I do that when I can place them up here and then use the, the boat to get them back for cheaper? So I think that's what I'm gonna go for here and then we'll try to sell it first actually if we can, but it's not gonna work out. Okay, never mind. So we're gonna try to Okay, 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 okay. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. There we go. We got round 40 over with. We're gonna buy the boat and then now we can, oh, I already sold it, what an idiot. Okay, that was that was not the best play. I was gonna use that and then buy the boat and then sell it, blah, 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 blah. But we're doing okay right here. And the reason why is I just wanna sell these back for more before I buy the village because I think we can actually farm a little bit better than we were doing. Because now with these all being over $20,000, we should be able to sell and buy this one pretty easily now. And go like this. There we go. And we could have even made it cheaper if I wasn't being a dummy. Sell both of these. Buy this one to a banana dude. There we go. 
And now we have enough for the juggernaut before round 50 that's gonna cause us problems and we're good to go. So it's not as good as I thought it would be. That's gonna actually scare me on half cash. I don't know if you're watching that, but it wasn't that great. So now I need to sell this guy to buy the ice. Maybe the ice will help it out a lot too, but we're not gonna have enough for all of that on half cash. Now I'm a little nervous. I thought it'd be a lot better. Oh, duh. Because the Moabs are double HP, why do I always do these blundering dumb moves? I was wondering why he's not taking him down as good as he should, and it's because they have <laughs> double the... <laughs> That's expected. What a dummy. I need to like pull my head out sometimes. But we're going to use this to our advantage, and I did add a fourth farm. So on hard mode, if you remember, we only had three farms, and we got him by 75, I want to say. We got the Apex. So I think we can actually get it a little quicker if we do it this way. So with that one extra farm, I can sell it 55,000 rather than 170. So I think we're already good. It's roughly around the same time. That's a little odd, right? I didn't expect that. Oh no, I'm way off. I was way off on my numbers. Okay, we're good. But I just find it odd that this guy is as much up in the face of this game as he can be. And you're still seeing the tips of Moabs and BFBs. But when you get something like a sniper, you don't see anything or like Spear of the Forest. It's like they can go past the fourth wall barrier thingy, whatever you want to call it. And this tower that's literally inside of the wall cannot. That is so weird to me. But this thing completely negates the fact that it is a double HP. They can care less. He's just destroying everything. It's those tubes coming out of the back of his head. They're just juicing him up. Might as well break it even a little bit more. Get that super riddle. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm really having a tough time thinking about what to do for half cash though, because I want to place my dart monkey here because of the extra long range that I can get for attacking like those early balloons that we're gonna lose, but then the boomerang would be better off there. But then I don't know if he'll have the range early on. I'm, I'm very confused right now, to be honest. Okay, so now we're on half cash. And I'm still gonna keep Benjamin. I just don't know where to place my dart. Thinking if it's a bad idea to place it here or there, because we gotta start with this. Actually, that's a good range for him. We'll start him here and leave this one like that. Because I really don't see us getting a discount village over here with like the monkeyopolis and all that garbage. So I think we'll be okay with this. And he can attack the turnarounds. That's exactly what I was looking for. Because then the worst case scenario is it will go around one more time here rather than going around a second time trying to get there. Because now we just hit it here. Boom, done. Oh my goodness, not boom, done. Okay, so maybe a sniper would be better earlier on just to, just to clean this up a little bit. Yes, we'll do that. It's so crazy to think how good just one zero 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 sniper is. He has 235 pops, 240 pops, meaning that he has saved our butts continuously from going all the way to the end of the screen, which is amazing. And it looks like we'll have this before round 15, one of the hardest rounds on half cash. No, we won't. Okay. We should still be able to clean it up though. And we still don't have a Benjamin. That's the scary part. And he's not the best getting him so late. So I think the safest choice is to be to get red hot rings first and let this guy carry us and then just sacrifice whatever we can because we need our Benjamin. We need him for round 40, I really believe so. And we'll use him for that first camo and now we're good. We have everything covered as far as camo, lead, regular popping power. Might not be as fast as we want it to be, but I think we'll be okay just to get our Benjamin at least. And there it is, there's Ben. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. We're killing it right now. Now I'd like to go straight for a farm, but I think we should do something a little bit smarter first. We'll grab this one. I wanna grab a sub, but I don't I think it'll be worth it. I think it's kind of a waste. I should go with the farm first. Who cares if we lose a couple lives on 33 and then like a little bit on 36, we're not gonna lose to it. So I think a farm is the better choice here for sure. And we're tearing up 33, that's totally no problem. I, I like this, let's do it. Now I do think I need to get a sub right here, unfortunately, because I don't know if we can even take down, I don't think we can take down the mob and what's underneath, can we? Because if he's not at level seven, we're gonna have to buy him up to it just to make sure we can take it out without having to like regenerate or anything like that, which is just a big waste of money if you think about it. Yeah, he's not gonna be enough. Oh no, 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 that's not good. We're gonna have to like power through this. Okay, I'm gonna sell this one, I'm gonna buy this one. There we go. And then we're gonna do this, take it open, and then ability. There we go, that was perfect. The best we're gonna be able to do, honestly. So we're not doing the best against like, the ceramics and stuff, but I don't think it matters because if I can just get this guy up to armor piercing darts, that'll take out most of the Moab problem we have. And then he is a good cleanup tower once they circle back around. I just wanted two farms because then that kind of guarantees us getting our ultra juggernaut, which would be great. I don't know if it's worth the shot. Like I think I should actually go for something else right here. That's actually scary. Let's go with this one right now because we are losing a little bit. This is getting kind of gut-wrenching now that I think about it because, oh man, I don't know what to do. I really need him to be an ultra juggernaut by that time, but then it's, sometimes it's like not that good, you know? So is that worth it? And look at that, how much like we're not doing good on it. Okay, 1845, let's just do it. 
There we go. We got ultra juggernaut or regular juggernaut. That should be enough to clean up everything and it will be. Okay, so we can maybe even get one more farm here, which is probably a stupid idea, but it might not be. It's actually not bad. Only on round 52. That means it'll have enough time to make money back because I think we'll make 200 per round. So that's eight. That's 1600 bucks. That should pay off enough to at least make it profitable to sell, especially since you got that bottom path makes it better to sell it. This might be good. And if we can get Ultra Juggernaut without having to sell one of the farms, we are golden, but I don't see that happening. Now, one thing that would be great is if I could actually put the Ultra Juggernaut next to a village on this little island, and I don't think that's possible. So if, if everything goes in my favor, I'm gonna buy an Ultra Jug and then buy an Ice and Brittle right here. And I think that should cover 63 and beyond without any problem, especially if I don't have to sell my sub, that would be awesome. Because these sell for 10 grand. We already have enough to buy this guy plus anything else. So I don't know why, but we're doing better than we have ever, 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 ever done in half cash. And I think it's just because the Ultra Juggernaut can hang on like a crazy person right now. That's literally the only thing that makes sense to me. Cause look at him just destroy everything. BFB, should I have done something different? Let's see, let's see. Let's just do this one just to make it easier. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. I love this. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I don't wanna lose now. So we'll do this one for right now. That's good, that's good. Ultra Juggernaut. There we go, use. And we'll sell this one right here. Put him right there. This is actually really good. I don't see us losing. I'm gonna use my ability on that first one just to make sure we get enough. And then with something like an embrittlement, we should be golden. And we still have a top bottom path farm. Like we've never had that. We've always just had like the regular marketplace and then the bottom path and we've had to sell it. But now we're actually going through these rounds without having any issues. This is amazing. I honestly cannot believe this. This is my greatest achievement in this entire series. And we are at 27 maps down. This is our 28th map. And this is my favorite half cash run ever. It has to be the map. It really does. Because if the same thing was applied on balance, it wouldn't work because balance comes in through the sides. Which then leads to my point I said earlier, like this is not an intermediate map. This is like a super uber beginner map. I guess you wouldn't be a beginner. You wouldn't know what to do on a beginner map. So I guess that's why it's not technically a beginner map. You wouldn't know where to place, what the best towers would be. You wouldn't even know what an ultra juggernaut is. But at the same time, this is insane. We are destroying our current record. We are going to have the fastest time yet. And I just wish I knew if it was because of cubism or because of apocalypse or because of the fact that this map is just super brokenly stupid easy. And oh man, I wish I would have timed that better. That would have been even better of a run. And we could have been doing something else, but I'm just like so fascinated on what we're doing here. Just, just do that, do that. Clean it up a little bit faster. Okay, now we're on alternate balloon rounds, which is purely awful. No collecting, no collecting. Oh my God, that's that's gonna ruin us. It's like I should save our best times for when there's no collection event going on. Cause look, at now you're stuck with that and you have to double click through it. That is goobery. That is very goobery. All right, alternate balloon rounds. And this one, I guess we start with a ninja. I guess, right? And put him right here so he like hits everything and like that. That should be more than enough, hopefully. He's not enough to take it out though. That's a bummer. So we'll go with Ninja Discipline and then we'll go with the Sniper just to help clean up like we did before. And that'll also be our lead popper. Now this should hold us off till Benjamin. I always say that going for a 201 or 202 Ninja is like a really, really good thing. I'm thinking if we get too many leads, this guy can't hang on his own, but obviously you can't go with the bottom path because then you have nothing to pop the camo lead on 24. So he's always like my safety. And then I always forget that I have to do it anyway because round 24 having one camo lead super weird. I don't understand how that's alternate. I mean, I guess technically it's alternated, but alternated from what? 24 has nothing to do with lead. Oh, but you get your first camo. I guess, I guess. I'm not gonna think too much about it. We're just gonna keep on rolling here. I'd like to get the Apex Plasma Master again by like 75, but at the same time, I don't understand why I need to do that. Um, we could just focus on getting like a bottom half plane, but for Impoppable, we're gonna get the Apex, obviously. If we can get it by 75 to, to 80, and impoppable, we can just sit back and not have to do anything else until the end. And we will have the fastest impoppable time we've ever seen, which is pretty cool. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the results. So I am gonna farm like a little crazy here, just a little bit, just a little bit. And then I think that we should buy a boomer and, or actually let's go with the druid on this one. I think it's a solid choice. Put them right here even. I know we've been utilizing the boomer, but that's for early game. And we're already past like the early, early game. So I don't understand the point of it. So now we have every type of balloon covered. So we're safe to farm a little bit more. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do for the first Moab since it is a fortified, but since we did get bin relatively early, we will definitely have enough for a Trojan level seven. So all we have to do is worry about popping it open. So even a simple uh, submarine will do great for that. Oh, nice. We have enough for a th third tower right here to get the alchemist. And I just realized too, like we don't even need to worry about anything else. The alchemist and the ninja are a great, great, great combo. They should be able to take down a fortified Moab down to its bones. And then we can just use Trojan to get rid of the rest of it. This should be pretty simple. And I can even push the limits a little bit and get at least one marketplace beforehand. 
Oh, I love pushing the barriers here, but this is such an easy map. I'm going to say it so many times, but it's so easy unless I make a mistake on chimps. And chimps, the only time I see myself making a mistake is at the very, very end with those DDTs because I'm going to overthink it and not do it right. But I'm, I have a really good setup in my brain. I just have to execute it and hope it works all right. But there's our Bloom Jitsu and we got the Alchemist Stronger Simulator. I don't think we need this guy because that's not where I'm going to put him anyway. So we'll just leave this like this. There we go. Now we have to do is take it out and we did. And I think what's better than this guy is just placing, well, first I got to farm a little bit more because I'm greedy. And then we'll buy him if we can place it, can we? Or is the dart monkey have a smaller hitbox? Oh, it looks like he does. I wanted a shimmer right there. How about shimmer right here? There we go. Oh, perfect. That's not bad at all. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want this guy to be able to see camo lead and camo in general, just because he's a super big help to that stuff. So this time I'm going to do it perfectly right. We're going to farm this one up. Oh, I did it again. And we're going to sell this one first. So we can get that double discount. Now we buy the monkey town, monkey city, and the bigger radius jungle drums. And now he's getting more money, which is great. That's what we needed. We can sell this one, sell this one, and buy this one. I realize this is just an alternate blue nose. This isn't even a poppable. I'm going a little too hard, but I guess I just want to get it out of my system and I want to make sure we're just destroying this thing. And so far, so good. We could be moving a little faster, I will say that. And like now we have a BFB here, but I don't care. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're super good. So now I can sell all of this, but I have to do it quickly is the problem to buy an Ultra Juggernaut. But I think it's the smart play there. So what we'll do is we will slow it down just a tad, just a tad. So we're going to sell, sell, sell. Buy this one right here. Make sure he's in range. Go all the way. And then we're going to buy this one and speed it back up. There we go. Now we don't care what's on the other side of that river. And I'm going to buy this one too and place it right there. And before 63, we have three farms and this one's worth 20 grand on its own. We have the boat to sell them back quicker. And like I said, I'm not going to get Apex because we've already, we're going to get that on Impopple. We've already got on two other modes, so we know we can. We just need this one to go faster and it only has to go to around 80. I wish I could get the discount on it. I guess I messed that one up. But what we can do is sell this one out and at least have one discount, right? And it'll be making that money, which is good. So there we go. We just need $82,000 and this one's worth 20, 40, 60, 70 grand. We already have enough to buy it and I just need another village. So let's just do that then. What are we messing around here? Just sell it and get out of here. There we go. Flying Fortress. We'll buy another village. Place it right here for that camo. And then I thought I'd throw in a Moab Eliminator to take down those the big old ZOMGs. And then we do this. And this is ridiculous. I don't have to farm anymore. I don't have to do anything. And we just shredded through this. Farming is the way to go. And this map is too easy. I can just keep using the Moab Eliminator. And then once we get to, I think 79 has two ZOMGs. And then 80 has one fortified. And the Moab Eliminator regenerates so quickly. It doesn't even matter. Is it in range so you could do this too? I think this works, right? No, it doesn't. Only for water towers, right? Unless I get the energizer. Oh, that's a bummer. I don't think it'll matter because like right now I can't even place it anyway because the plane comes out <laughs> and shoots everything so quickly. I didn't think of that though. This might be a better way to shimmer than this one. The shimmer is great because it has the fire too if you go with that upgrade. So it might be a better play. But okay, so here's on 79 and then 80 it'll regenerate. Oh my goodness. Wait, I don't even see a ZOMG. I don't even see it. Does it matter? And I'm just destroying whatever's even coming out of there. Look, there it is again. And there's 80. We'll use it. I think I just blew it up. Blow it up again. Why not? Oh, there because there's two of them. And we get it. Come on. There we go. One shot, one kill. There we go. And now we're on Impoppable. Dude, this is so fast. This is the fastest I've ever seen in my life. We're already on 148. Okay, so for this one, my idea was to do the same thing as before. Okay, and then we're going to put the boomerang here. Okay, there we go. So I think that's a better spot for the boomer because then I can keep him there and I don't have to sell him. Plus he's getting that extra little range there. And then just because I know what's going to happen, everything costs so much, we're going to sacrifice a little tiny bit of time and I'm going to grab a sniper so we don't have any like stragglers at the very end. We'll just put him right there, leave him on strong, and now we don't have any problems for cleanup. So now the only problem that I'm thinking is that when I need to take down camo, I don't want this guy to be my camo. So what do I do to get us? I mean, through 24, we can just use this guy, but I don't think that's what I want him to be at the finale. Actually, though, yes. Yeah, why wouldn't I? Just do that. You're fine. Okay, it's not going to cut it for 33, though. I guess I just am going to have to place another one here and get him to camo and then get the sub. I guess that's the only way to get through these early camos. That's not the worst, right? I mean, it gets the job done and then we can actually help speed it up a little bit because I farmed a little bit too much, I want to say just because things were starting to circle around, but I'm just like so hooked on getting that Apex Plasma Master before 80 so we can just sit back and do nothing all the way to 100. That'll be the speediest stun ever. So now we're good. Now I think we're actually good. We have everything covered. And Benjamin is making a whole world of difference in all of this. Like I, jeez, I should just be using him instead of Sada, but now for Chimps mode, I think I should use Sada, right? Because 
Benjamin would be great for like that first Moab, but we're not getting money from him, so it's not going to be anywhere like what it should be. So now I need to think about what hero to use. So that would be the best, of course, but then Etienne would be great too. Because then I wouldn't even have to worry about Camo early on. No, I, I, I'm going to stick with uh, Sada. Let's just use her. No, 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 no. Because I have no guarantee that you can play Sada and two Dart Monkeys. Because I need a Dart Monkey, an Ice Monkey, and a Sada on the same rock. I don't know if that's possible. And that would re that would cause us an entire restart. Because I plan on him being the only one that does that. Oh, that's hard. I don't know. Oh, I forgot this. Oh my gosh. I totally realized that. <laughs> I did it again. I just let that mob kind of sink through and I'm like watching. I'm like, uh, uh, can I do this? And luckily we had a Trojan. That was funny. But I'm trying to think like maybe Striker Jones because he does that extra pierce now. And so if you had a bunch of subs here and a striker right there, that might actually be a solid play. And then he probably will be in range of the Dart Monkey too. I might switch to a Striker Jones, which I've never, ever, ever done. And I think it might actually be pretty cool. That would be hilarious. So I'm going to start the process now. I have a Juggernaut and a submarine so we should be pretty good on everything so i can start buying this one and we have the boat here too so we can get that higher sell price of course because oh we got it for him too that's actually really good all right so we're gonna place this one right next to it so we can get that cheaper price on the monkey town monkey city bigger radius jungle drums and now he is getting more money which is amazing but now we have to sell both of these to get to the other one which is a little bit of a waste because this only costs five thousand once i have the one farm so I think I need about like 15 grand and then I can buy a farm right off the rip, I believe. Okay, so we'll have 15 grand, we'll sell both of these. We'll place one down, get the Monkeyopolis, buy this one, and we should be able to grab it. Oh, we're off by like $1,000. That's not terrible. So we need 17 grand in the future if that's what you're going for. <laughs> well, there's our first banana farm on 54, which we never have had before, right? Like usually it's not that fast. So I'm actually going to go for it here and get the banana research facility for the second one and then buy Ultra Juggernaut because he'll take us through 63 without any quarrels or anything. Well, that's not that's not good right here. Whatever's going on. Okay. Those camos are too much for us. So we need to get our ice monkey going as soon as we can. But first I need to farm because I'm greedy. I'm so greedy, guys. But that should be fine. Now we'll have our Ultra Juggernaut. And 59 lead. 59 lead. Okay, don't be stupid. We got to do this. We're going to go to this one and then buy the ice now. There we go. I don't have to worry about the camo lead on 59 because that would have destroyed us and I would have gone, oops, I got to retry. Even though I could have just made this guy fire too, that would have gotten us through that pr little predicament. Oh man, how dumb. But I'm going to try to time this one perfectly. Did I get it for 60? I did. Yes, it was just the Moab. And now we have Ultra Juggernaut. You, 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 you. Which you know what that means? If this guy fits there, does that mean an alchemist will fit there? Oh, it does. It does mean an alchemist will fit there. That is goofy. That is so goofy. So this time I farmed a little bit more because I want to make sure that we get get the like the best apex we can get as early as we can get because I don't want to have to worry about it. I don't want to level one. I know it'll be quick, but I want it to be as quick as possible. So I might even put down the 20 or so that it takes. But first, I'm going to get a couple of crossbow masters to help us out just for our basic speed of this right now, because now that's going to be insanely quick. I can't place another one there, so I guess we'll place it here. So I have 28 dart monkeys here, and I believe that was the right way to do it, right? I want to say it's like 25. I never know exactly how many. And then you get like a 220 or 202, whatever it might be. And then you're good to go. Because it's 180 on here. But I don't think it matters. We're doing pretty good. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 1, 2. So now we have the makings to make like a, at least a, like a, what, a 30 Paragon. And that will destroy everything. And so we can sell for 20, 40, 60, 80, 110, let's just say. I think it's even more, 115 or so. But let's say 110, 130, 140. So we only need 40 grand. And there it is. We already have it. We can just buy it right now and call this a day. And we won't have any quarrels or quandaries or any. Let's just do it. What am I talking about? Stop using fancy words, you big dummy. Just do this and buy this thing as much as you can get it up there. 34,000 on top of it. And I got a level 39 one. 30. Nine, that is insane. We'll get rid of everything else and we'll get this up to 33,000 once we can. We're at two hours and one minute and 45 seconds. How did we get two hours and 16 minutes on cubism? I'm going as fast as humanly possible, plus with the updated apocalypse. I don't see how we can go any faster unless is the plane faster than the Apex Plasma Master because it is coming out of the screen. You're seeing the tips of their noses, which you don't see with the with the plane. I'm wondering if that's like a better choice. Little nervous about it, to be honest. I hope that's not the case. 
I think it might be. We need to just get out of here. Let's just buy this one instead then. No, 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 because I have bought this and it hasn't been fast enough. I don't want to make any mistakes. Just keep it going. We're still in a really good time and we could possibly beat chimps a little faster, but I do have to change my hero to striker and I do have to probably get through a collection too. So there's a lot of things, little things going on here. We can just help out by bombing this guy. Just keep using it. Like, don't get me wrong, we are destroying this time and I'm very, very, very happy. It's gonna be completely our fastest intermediate by far and possibly our second place run. I'm just trying to get our first place run. I don't see why it shouldn't be. Cubism isn't that much crazy, right? Pop it open, pop it open, there we go. P perfect, go faster, 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 faster. Okay, so home, don't get a collection. We're gonna go to hero, we're gonna go to striker. I haven't bought him in so long. Okay, I'm not gonna buy anything. Don't, don't be dumb, we're almost there. Intermediate, there we go, there we go, chimps, there we go. So difficult. All right, so we're gonna go like this and we're going to buy, oh God, what did I decide? What did I decide? We're gonna go with this one and we're gonna go with this one right here, right? So like right there, like that, there we go. And then we have our striker and that's actually a really good spot for him. He's gonna hit everybody and you get that extra pierce and stuff. So I don't see how this could be a bad call. That's actually really good. I do think this is completely insane to be honest because not only I don't think I've ever used Striker in this run, I've only used Striker for a couple niche reasons on my main account, which is just pure insanity. And to think that we're gonna be using it for an actual chimps run for a purpose, like not out of funness or memeing or anything like that. It's just straight up to win. I think that is so cool. But it's just the fact that he does that 25% pierce and extra range is gonna be phenomenal. I don't know about the range so much, but just everything else is phenomenal about that. And he does pop lead. I don't know how he is about camo led but i don't think it'll matter by that point because we will have an alchemist and he has that amazing stall ability with the moab so once we break it open we stall the ceramics and then clean it up with our oh dude this is actually not bad so far what i'm worried about though is obviously ultra juggernaut and uh sub commander are cheap we can get them relatively quickly and they'll destroy everything for us but will they be enough for those later rounds? That's the scary part. I think we might need something a little bit better in the end. I didn't even know this was another ability. Focus, target focus for 15 seconds, mortar monkeys target touch cursor with increased accuracy. What's that even mean? Like I'm not gonna be using a mortar, so it doesn't matter, but this would be another great, this would be a great one for mortar, wouldn't it? But we're gonna have 25% pierce on round 40 for this guy. Oh, this is actually really, really good. Like watch what's gonna happen here. So everybody should have an upgrade above their head. I don't know if it shows, it doesn't look like it does, but we can just stall it like we just did. Even that quick second stall was enough just to get an extra, you get like double damage on that little second there. That's awesome. I'm a little nervous that it doesn't show a little striker symbol above their head. Does that mean they're not getting the buffs? Does that mean something's broken? Because I'm relying on that. Otherwise I wouldn't have used striker Jones. He's kind of like a lame -o Jones at that point, but hopefully it works. Because 25% pierce on these towers is amazing, like super amazing. And even before 50, we have an Ultra Juggernaut, which is going to carry us, like straight carry us through this thing. I don't want to take unnecessary risks that could put us in a super, super bad predicament, but I'm really thinking about going for the Mad. I was going to buy the Sub Commander, but we're destroying everything. I think we could take out 60 easily, and if we can, that means no DDTs or BF, sorry, BFBs are going to be a problem, and we might be able to make our long hike to the Mad. Now I'm talking quad triple, almost quadruple what we have here. I think you need about like 80 grand to get it. But if you did, you'd be unstoppable because this thing can clean up anything. I think we should do it, but I'm just a little nervous that we're just gonna start getting stressed out around like 75, because look at this. Okay, that took a little too long. Yeah, that's not good. All right, let's do this. Let's do sub commander, because that'll just guarantee victory. We'll buy this one like we talked about. So put them right there, all the way to ice shards. Now what I am worried about is, I don't remember, I, I could be completely wrong here. Does it make this tower completely unusable? I don't have sound on on my end, it's there when you guys watch it on the post end, but I'm a little worried that it's just making that clanky clank noise and the sub commander is completely useless with this guy, but I'm pretty sure embrittlement takes away everything to where it doesn't matter and they take damage regardless. I'm thinking and I'm hoping. You know, worst case scenario, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like. What we'll have is just an extra little waste of money right there. I think we wasted like 15, 20 grand. And we don't really need that much more. Like worst case scenario, we could go with a top path mortar since we do have the mortar hero and it will get us through and clean it up. Or we could go with like a spike factory at the bottom. So I'm gonna try to make the long haul to $64,000 and we'll just see where we start to struggle and if we're gonna be able to make it. I'm not gonna take any risks that we don't need to. So if it starts getting pretty bad at like 85 with a couple ZOMGs, then we're gonna call it quits. 
but I know that no balloon will stand in our way and most Moab classes should be fine. I can see Fortified's causing us a lot of problems, but we just went through 75, one of the harder rounds with no problems, and we only need 54,000, <laughs> only 54,000, but we're almost there. So here's our first COMG and it looks like it is taking a little too long. Like it's not bad, but it's taking a, a really long time. And I don't, we, I, we don't need that. We don't need that. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I know we can do this a lot faster. If like, seriously, just the spirit of the forest right now would be really, really good. We might just have to run with that. But I kind of don't want to give up on it yet because we are doing it. And I know that the 90s will be so much faster and easier if we have a mad just doing massive damage. And then this guy cleaning up everything underneath would be kind of broken. And I didn't put this guy in range for the pierce effect. I could have put him right there and had him shooting that way. What a dummy. But we're halfway there to the money and we're getting money faster each round. So this might be beneficial. It's just these rounds take way too long, way too long. Like they're not any damage or danger to us, but they're just so long. But don't forget, I do have these abilities too to slow everything down. Why didn't I use those before? And it regenerates so fast too, and it slows everything down like immensely. That's actually really good. And we didn't even lose anything. So I need $14,000, but you know how that goes. You're right when you're at the cusp of getting what you need, you always lose it, but we'll just try, we'll try. Oh my gosh, they actually got through on that one. That was scary. I wonder how these DDTs are gonna last. See, that's what I'm talking about. We're so close, but then so far, we can't handle DDTs. So I, I think we need to stop right now. That was our answer right there. Unless we can get it on this round, which I don't know if we can. We can't go past 93. Maybe though, I'm gonna chance it, cause why not? Take risks here, guys. That's how we do it. If not, I'm gonna throw down a uh, spike factory at the back, but I think we'll be okay. There we go, there we go, there we go. Mad, okay. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, now how do we clean up everything just to be on the safe, complete safe side in case this guy can't handle it? We do this, we buy one of these, go like this, and then we buy something to get rid of all the camo. So we go like this, there we go, now we're fine. We can even slow it down this way too. Dude, that was so worth it. That was so worth it. Oh my gosh, we did it. Oh, that's so beautiful. That makes me feel so good inside. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> so we can clean everything up, no problems. There's 97 destroyed and we, okay, okay, okay. Remember, we gotta go home, hit the button, make it go speedy, speedy, fast, fast. And I'm gonna do this too, just to make it a little bit faster. A little slower, I mean, we're gonna use that ability there. Clean everything up, hopefully. Stall some of this stuff. What are we doing? What are we doing? I need to slow it down, don't I? Oh my goodness, that was not good. Okay, we did it though, we did it. Okay, we got those DDTs, they're no problem at all. Now we got the big old bad right there. Let's clear them out. Oh my goodness, that's easy. Throw those DDTs, use the glue there to slow everything down, and then we're done. Okay, oh my gosh. That was scary, I don't know why we went for that. I just felt like I had to. Do not give me collection, you, you would. This game, I swear to you. Remember, don't do that, go back, because you're gonna lose it. We're gonna go there, intermediate, FN9. Boom, two hours, 20 minutes, 30 seconds. Where does that leave us? Dude, second place. Dude, second place. That puts us above skates, but under cubism. That is our second fastest time out of every map that we've done and our extremely faster intermediate map. Oh my goodness, it has to be because of what it is. It has to be because Sulphur Springs was like the easiest thing ever. Like I don't see that happening with Water Park when you have to place one tower here and another one up there and it takes forever to come around the track. Or poly, Polyphemus, <laughs> poly, Polyphemus. That one's not gonna be the same either. But oh my gosh, I have some like crazy excitement for beginner maps now that with the new Apocalypse. I think we're gonna be like breaking all of our records from here on out. I really do, that was amazing. And we use Striker Jones. Can you believe we use Striker Jones? That is the most grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. I do not like using him. And we just did. And that was so awesome. And if you enjoyed this speed run of Sulphur Springs, I definitely think you're gonna like this video where we try to see if we can get all eight Paragons before round 100 in Bloom's TD6. Is it even possible to make that much money that quickly?